or I saw up as we pray together. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord in prayer that this last Sunday will be a great impact and blessing upon your life. I was expecting you to pray, open your mouth and tell the Lord that this will be a day of His power in your life, provision in your life, a new day, a new power, a new strength to carry you from the old to the new year. Now the word of the Lord will not be lost on you. That you will not continue in the new year as you did in the past. For the word which you are hearing, the word we are learning will be of tremendous impacting, transforming, changing your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Father, we bless your name for seeing us through, bringing us to this point, leading us to this point, assisting us, giving us your grace, to live for your glory, even to this point. We we'll pray, Lord, from this point on, we'll go higher in Jesus' name. We we'll reach Father in Jesus' name. And we pray that you deal with every one of us as your beloved, special, favorite child in Jesus' name. Help us today to take in your word and to pray through your word and then to have the benefit of your word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Leviticus chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 10, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. And ye shall eat old stock, and bring forth the old because of the new. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. You notice two words there, the old and the new. And here is the promise of the Lord. Here is the provision of the Lord. Here is the prophetic utterance of the Lord. That ye shall eat the old store. You will not forget the old store. You will not cast out the old store. You will not abandon the old store. And then it says, and bring forth the, need, the old. Then it says, because of the new. Here the Lord brings together the old and the new. You should understand. We're getting to the new year. But we don't abandon the old house where we've been living. We can renovate it. We can paint it. We can make it better. But we don't abandon the old house. We can renew it as we come to the new year. You understand? Here we carry a body around. The same body that we used and had in the old year. The same body we carry into the new year. Yes, we can make it healthier, happier, stronger, so that the new year will have the same old body, but will have a renewed strength. Here we are. The same family we have now. In the old year, we carry that same family to the new year. We can renew our covenant. 
we can renew our relationship and we can make better provision for that family yet it's still the same family that we carry to the new year there are many people that have the wrong idea that all that were learned in the old year all the consecrations were made in the old year all the covenant were made in the old year as we come to the new year we are abandoned and then we'll say we're starting afresh now it is like we never had any conversion never had any conviction never had any consecration never had any commitment it's a new year now that's wrong the same conversion that we had in the old year we carry to the new year the same consecration we had in the old year we carry to the new year and the same commitment we had in the old year we carry to the new year we make it better we make it higher and we make it stronger but it's still the same old commitment and consecration we carry into the new year there are many people that make mistakes and you say you see the old testament we can close that up we can cancel that we can forget that let's rush and move on to the new testament that's wrong the same god of the old it is the same god of the new and the same god that says i am god i change not he brings us from the old he brings us to the new he may lift us higher but we're built on the foundation of the old and we stand on the strength of the old and we obey all the words that he has given us coming from the old to the new come back to leviticus chapter 26 reading from verse 10 again it says that you shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new then he says i will set my tabernacle among you amen my soul shall not abhor you i will walk among you i will walk among you if you don't abandon the old for the new if you don't forget the old covenant totally because of the new if you don't forget your old relationship with the lord because you are coming to a new year then he says i will walk among you and will be your god and ye shall be my people verse 13 i am the lord your god which brought you forth out of the land of egypt it says uh, that old land I'm, that, I'm still that same god the old familiar territory i brought you out of that i'm still the same god it says i am the lord i'm bringing you out of the old year i'm taking you to the new year and it says i'm still that same god that brought you forth out of the land of egypt that ye should not be their bondmen and i have broken the bands of your yoke my yokes are broken my fetters are broken my oppression is taken away it says i have broken your yoke and made you go tell me tell me upright made you go upright the same feet were used in the last year in the old year walking in the way of god walking in the path of righteousness the same feet is going to be stronger it's going to be steadier and it's going to be faster but the same old feet we had in walking uprightly that same feet we still have and we need to understand so that we don't have the erroneous idea all the words we had at the retreat everything is gone under the bridge uh -uh. still the same all the old things we had in every study in every service in every retreat all those old things the lord gave us we carry them without losing them and we go into the new year we're coming to matthew chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 51 matthew chapter 13 
reading from verse 51 Jesus says unto them have ye understood all these things everything we're hearing the Lord is interested and the Lord is finding out have you understood all these things and they said unto him yea Lord yes Lord then said he unto them therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things tell me out aloud tell me again tell me if you understand new and old is telling us and repeating it again as we treasure all the commandments of God as we treasure the will of God as we treasure all the goodness of God in our lives it says we're bringing forth new and old that is we're not forgetting the old abandoning the old jettisoning adjusting the old and burying the old because you know this is a new year it says you bring forth both the old and the new you know sometimes you need to think the same faith we had in the past old we still have to bring that faith into the new year because the same problems of the old year the same persecutors of the old year and the same oppressors of the old year they don't all die at the end of the old year and as we come to the new year we better carry our faith we better carry our fortitude we better carry our confidence and we better carry our courage of the past going to the new make it higher make it stronger so that whoever rises up like the old time in the new time will thrash them will conquer them will destroy them but let me show you something galatians chapter 4 galatians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 28 galatians chapter 4 verse 28 now we brethren as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Is bringing the old, is bringing it to the new. It says, Isaac was. That's in the past. That's old. Then it says, We are the children of promise. Are present time new. Look at verse 29. But as then. In the old as then in the past as then in the time that is gone as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so tell me it is now in the past look at the persecutors those who are born after the flesh those who are carnal those who are having the works of the flesh who were the persecutors in the past it said those who are born after the flesh and the works of the flesh they will do and it says don't forget that don't forget that as we come to the new year as we come to the new experience don't think that those persecutors of the old are going to be different in the new. But thank God, we're going to have new strength. We're going to have new power. We're going to have a new engagement where we'll surprise every persecutor. You know, it is still the same. They may even multiply the techniques of persecution will surprise them you will surprise them new strength new power 
new authority, a new anointing, a new boldness, a new courage where we'll overcome them all in Jesus' name. I'm waiting for the battle of the old year. I'm waiting for the persecutors of the old year and I'm getting ready for the new year. Everyone I meet in any corner, I will overcome. I'm talking about you there. I'm talking for you there. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Today, as we are having the last Sunday, in the old year passing on, and then we're coming to the next year, a new year, I want to examine something with you, the old and the new, the old and the new, the old and the new, especially because there's a lot of misunderstanding of the relationship between the old and the new. Three things we're looking at. The subject today is the new beneficiaries of the old inexhaustible provision. The new beneficiaries. Are they here today? New beneficiaries. I said, are they there today? What are they? New beneficiaries. New beneficiaries. Put on your hands. God bless you. I said, God bless you. The new beneficiaries of the old inexhaustible provision. Feast after the famine. Banquet. The old inexhaustible banquet the old inexhaustible feast was still feasting you'll keep on feasting new beneficiaries of the old inexhaustible provision three things number one believing the old promises for new pilgrims they are old, those promises, as old as the Old Testament, as old as the ancient of days, the old promises, but for new pilgrims. Number two, bringing the old price for a new progress. Bringing the old price for a new progress. Point number three, benefiting from the old privileges as new peculiar people. Benefiting from the old privileges as new peculiar people. Number one, believing the old promises for new pilgrims. To start with, we need to understand the Old Testament people were referred to as pilgrims and strangers. And the New Testament people, the same thing, old or new, we are pilgrims. We're walking this path. We're going from here to there. We're going from earth to eternity. We're going from this world to heaven as it was with them that were called pilgrims. So it is with us, we're called pilgrims. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, and embrace them and they confess that they were in the old they were in the old testament they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth mark it down in your mind note it down on your paper they were called strangers and pilgrims let's come to first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11. Dearly beloved, he's talking to 
New Testament believers now. It's talking to you, talking to me. It's talking to the people who refer to they, themselves that they're now in the new covenant. Look at what it says. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. As strangers and pilgrims. The same thing that was said about the old covenant people strangers and pilgrims the same thing it says about the new covenant people strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul what were the old testament promises the old promises that saw them through those people of the past how did they get through how did they walk the narrow way? What was their strength? What was their support? What was the standard before them? What were the experiences they had that made them stand? Believing the old promises for new pilgrims. Isaiah chapter 45. I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Look unto me, and be you saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. What carry them through? Salvation. Salvation from God. God alone. And they are to look away from their idols. Look away from their tradition. Look away from the past. And look unto him. Because he is God. And there is none else that can save. That's Old Testament. What does it say in the New Testament? Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Have you noticed that? It's saying, look unto Christ. is the only Savior. Look away from darkness. Look away from occultism. Look away from tradition. Look away from religion. Look away from every other thing. And look unto Jesus. Because there's no salvation in any other. In the old salvation. In the new salvation. We're coming to Psalm 130. Psalm 130. I'm reading from verse 8. The old pilgrims. The old time believers. How did he get through? On the basis of the promises of God. Number one, promise for salvation. Psalm 130. I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 130, verse 8. And he shall redeem Israel from how many of his iniquities? All his iniquities. That's how they got through. It's the promise of redemption. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Turn with me to Titus chapter 2. We've read what kept the old victorious. What kept the old people confident, conquering, redeemed from all iniquity. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from somebody there, tell me out aloud, all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. In the old, he will redeem Israel from all iniquity. In the new, the same promise will carry to the new, and it says, Christ gave himself on the cross sacrificed on the cross shed his blood on the cross that he might redeem us from all iniquity the same old promise you cannot cast off all those old promises and say now when the new what they had was nothing 
what they had was insignificant what they had was not proper but now we're in the new not at all not at all the old promises of salvation the old promises of redemption from all iniquity those things are still standing out today i'm coming to exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 and i'm reading from verse 33 exodus 32 verse 33 and the lord said unto moses whosoever have sinned against me him will i blot out of my book oh, you see is that a promise yes that's a promise. It says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise. And after that salvation, whosoever will turn back, forsake me, abandon me, and go into deliberate sinning or sinfulness, I'll blot out his name. I will. It's not done it yet. It's waiting. If somebody goes back into deliberate will for sinning, I will blot out of my book. That's what he said. That's the promise in the old. Come to the new now. We're coming to Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 5. I'm showing you that we carry the old into the new. And we don't say that's old. And then when the new, the same thing, we carry the old into the new. Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. He overcomes. He doesn't sin. He overcomes. He is uh, victorious. Victorious over sin. And because he's victorious over sin, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. What if he doesn't overcome? It's right there. If he's not an overcomer, if he's sinful, if he's a backslider, if he goes back to Satan, if he goes back to his idol, I'll put out his name. But if he keeps on standing and he keeps on overcoming, he that overcometh, I will not blot out his name. Come to Exodus chapter 15 exodus chapter 15 in the old verse 26 the promises of the old that follow us into the new exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, plural, and keep all his statutes, plural, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am, as I was, I am I am the Lord, what does he do for you? That he lets thee. That's in the old, that's in the old. It says, we listen to his commandments. We obey his commandments. We walk in the paths of righteousness. He says, you know what I'm going to do for you? I will be your healer. I am the Lord that he lets thee. That's Old Testament. Come to the New Testament now, James chapter 5. James chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 15. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another tell me what then will happen tell me if you're opening your bible with me that ye may be healed stop there 
confess your faults when you are sick, when you are oppressed, when you are pain, wrecking, ruining, and making your body like rocks. And you don't know what to do. It says, sing through sin and sickness are joined together. Sin and suffering are joined together. And if you find any sin that's the cause of this, confess your sin unto God that he will forgive you. And then the person you have offended, confess your sin, your faults, one to another. And then pray one for another that she may be healed. The healing is still dependent on hearing the word, accepting the word, keeping the word, obeying the word. You cannot say now, this is New Testament. God, heal me. I'm going to use the healing to stop the devil. But heal me anyhow. No, it says, sin no more. Lest a worse sin come on thee. That's why it says, confess your faults one to another. That she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I didn't see here an amen there. Yeah. Let's look at Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. You know what we're doing? We're looking at the promises of the old that we carry into the new. We don't abandon the whole of the Old Testament and say, now New Year is coming. A new dawn is coming, and I'm moving on to the new year. Forget about the old. No. You eat of the old store, and you bring into the new. You look at the faithfulness of God in the olden time, and then you come to the new with that confidence of the faithfulness of God, because his faithfulness is ever new every morning. Job chapter 5 verse 19. Job chapter 5 verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. What is he there? What is she there? No evil will touch you. Evil eyes will not see you. Evil power will not cut your life down. Accidents will be far away from you. Disasters will be far away from you. Look at what it says in the old, that it will deliver us from six troubles. And then, remember, seven is the number for completeness, for totality. Every form of evil, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Let's come to the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. That's for me. I said that's for me. Why don't you say it to yourself? The Lord shall deliver me from every evil world and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom in whom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You see what the Lord is saying? It's in the old, it's in the new. And so we who are New Testament pilgrims were taking those promises in the old and we know that they are brought into the new and we're not just abandoning everything of the old and saying we're settling for the new I'm coming back to the Old Testament 2 Chronicles 
chapter 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what, what I shall give thee. Ask what I shall give thee. Verse 10. Give me now, somebody there. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Understand here, the Lord gave him an open check and said, Ask what you want as you come to the new what does it say ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you is bringing the old to the new and it says everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Ask, and he asked for wisdom. Come to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, look at that. Old Testament, ask. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And God said, because you've asked for this, I'm going to give you this wisdom and knowledge, and I'm going to give you more. And we come to the New Testament, and it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to how many people? That give it to how many people? You're going to have greater wisdom today than when you came. That give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not and it shall be given him. I will have more wisdom, I will have more strength, I will have more knowledge, I will have I will not be ignorant of the overcoming life. As you come into the new year, all the wisdom you need to overcome, the Lord will give you. All the knowledge you need, to bring the enemy before your Christian life, to bring him down, you will have. And all the power, all the courage, all the strength, all the backbone you need to give you the strength to overcome in the new year, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 57. Old and then the new. Psalm 57. In Psalm 57, I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 57, verse 2. This is so important. You know, uh, there are many people that do not understand that all these things were there for the old time pilgrims. And then they don't know also that the same promises that were available for the old time pilgrims are available for the new time new testament pilgrims psalm 57 i'm looking at verse 2 i will cry unto god most high unto god that performeth that performeth that performeth as we come to the new year and then any challenge faces your life. You remember, that challenge is under the theme, the title, and the topic of all things. I'm looking at victorious people. I'm looking at conquering people. Nothing will drive you back from the way of victory, accomplishment, and success in the new year in Jesus' name. There is a God in heaven, and he performs all things for me. He will do it for you. 
underline those words all things for me Matthew chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 33 Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you the same thing is said in the old the same thing is said in the new he performs all things for me and in the new as you go into the new year there will be no failure in your life as you pray there will be no disappointment as you seek the Lord you will find the Lord the watch word for you this coming year all things perform in your life all things done in your life all things will perform it for you in Jesus name Romans chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 32 Romans chapter 8 verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us also freely give me also freely give me you have it it will be done even from this morning in the old year that's about to pass away and you're coming into the new year you'll carry a basket of blessings of all things of all things i said of all things believing the old promises for new pilgrims point number two bringing the old price for a new progress bringing the old price for a new progress there are many people that want to have progress that's normal that's legitimate that's a good desire but they don't connect price with progress they think progress will just come how did it happen in the old there is a price in the new there is a price let's come back to the old bring in the old price for a new progress second samuel chapter 24 second samuel chapter 24 we read him from verse 24 and the king said unto Arauna, nay but i will surely buy each of thee at a price i want to progress at a price i want improvement at a price i want achievement at a price I want divine favor at a price. I want the plagues all to be totally erased, eradicated out of the nation at a price. You see, there are people, they say prayer is the key. And there's no price to that prayer. There's no self-denial to that prayer. And there is no giving something, giving themselves to that prayer. There is no absolute surrender to the King of Kings for that prayer. That's a superficial prayer, and it's not the key. It says, I will surely buy each of thee at a price. Neither will I offer bunch offering unto the Lord my God god of that which does cost me nothing cost me nothing cost me nothing 
<laughs> there are some people and I hope our church does not become like them. All they say, they meet somebody, they speak, they say, speak a word in my life. They continue in their sin, speak a word in my life. They continue in their idolatry, speak a word in my life. They continue in their careless life in the presence of the Lord, speak a word in my life. Their religion costs them nothing. Their prayers cost them nothing. Their service cost them nothing. But here David said, I will buy it at a price. And I will not offer anything to the Lord that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for filthy shakers of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was staged from Israel. Price. The old price. If we're going to make new progress, Matthew chapter 13, New Testament now. Matthew chapter 13 is still the same. We're reading from verse 44 and verse 45. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Heat in a field, which a man, which when a man has found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had and buys the field. He selleth all that he had and he buys the field. This is a man that knows if you're going to have treasure in the kingdom of God, there is a price to pay. In verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly peers. Verse 46, who when he had found one pearl of great price. Christianity is not cheap of great price following the lord is not cheap of great price serving the lord is not cheap of great price having a place in the kingdom of god is not cheap of great price he went and sold all that he had and he bought it he bought it coming to acts Chapter 19, verses 18 and 19. There are things to give up, friends, if we're going to serve the Lord acceptably. There's a price to pay if we're going to make new progress in the new year in God's kingdom. Acts chapter 19, verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds, many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burnt them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found each 50 pieces of silver. You know what happened there? There were these people that came to know the Lord. And as they knew the Lord and believed in the Lord, there were things, materials of Satan in their possession. They didn't say, I'm a Christian now. I'm a believer now. And I bought these things at a great price. What will I do now? I know I cannot keep on using them. Okay, I know what I will do. I will find somebody who still wants to serve Satan and I will sell them to him so that 
I can recover my money. They said, no, they can't do that. As they were slaves of Satan, and they came out of the captivity of Satan, and now they have the material, the regalia of Satan with them, if they gave it to another person, if they sold it to another person, that is saying that person should not be saved. When that person hears the word of salvation, and then somebody tells him, you have to give that up, come out from among them. All the regalia of that gang, come out from among them. Then they will come to them and say, uh -uh, you sold this thing to me, and you know it is evil. And you know it binds me more to the devil and you sold to me. That's why they could not sell to them. They could not give their friends the things that they were abandoning, the things they were throwing away. They must pay the price. If you're following the Lord, you have to pay the price. You have a shop that is full of alcohol, intoxicating drink. Now you've come to know the Lord. The price the people paid in the old is the price we pay in the new. You know what? The price is all those bottles of intoxicating drink will have to go. It's the price we pay. You have all those uh, dresses that the people of the world wear to trap men, to attract men, to destroy men, to pollute the minds of people, and to defile society. Now you say you come to know the Lord. Believers, there is a price to pay. And the price is, I cannot give this to another person and say, I am no more of the world. You are still of the world. This is good for you. Hell is good for you. Defilement is good for you. Being an instrument in the hand of Satan is good for you. Take this. No, you cannot do that. There's a price to pay the price to pay is that you lose all the money that you used to buy in them. You're now a believer. And you, before you became a believer, you bought a lot of books. A lot of books from erroneous preachers, erroneous prophets. And you have a lot of wrong things there. The hell, fire of hell is almost oozing out, coming out of the pages because of the blasphemy in those books and because of the defilement in those books and because of the evil in those books. Now you're a believer. There is a price to pay. The old price for new progress if you're going to make progress in your Christian life. If your Christian life is going to is going to make you associated indefinitely with the Lord, that's a price to pay. You burn those books. Thank God you will. I said, thank God you will. Did your father hand over the title of idolatry to you? And it says, my son, or maybe my daughter, it says that this sin has been in the family from my great, great grandfathers. He passed on to them, to them, and then to me, and now you are the next one in line. And you want to get to heaven, and you want to be saved. And now you give your life to the Lord. There's a price to pay. All those things your parents, your grandfathers handed over to you, everything will be rejected everything will be burnt and you'll be free on your way making progress to heaven in jesus name come back come back acts chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 13 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds and many of them also which use curious as brought their books together and what did they do? What did they do? Secretly. 
How did they do it? Ah, now you are quiet. You are afraid to go, run away from Satan. You are afraid to stand for God. Anybody afraid there? I said, anybody afraid there? If you are not afraid, and they bunch them, tell me, before all men, and they counted the price of them and found each 50 pieces of silver. You know what? You have a price to pay. As you want to have new progress now as believers, children of God in the kingdom. You are doing things before for other people. They don't want their signature to be on that document. They want to defraud the company. And they say that they are high up and they are going to do it by proxy. And they bring papers to you. You don't know the consequence. Sign this check. Sign this document. You are the one running the errands for them when they want to steal from the company. And you are the one to do the signing, do the signing, good boy, good girl in the company. And you don't get anything out of that. Or maybe they give you some peanuts. But really, the person who is making you to do it is the one who is getting all the money. Now you are born again. Now you are a child of God. Now you are a believer. And we're getting to the new year. And you're making up your mind in this old year, going to the new year, I will not sign a fraudulent document for anybody anymore in the new year. I didn't hear your amen. And now the new year has come, and then you go to the office. Hey, come on here. Where have you been? What were you doing? Where were you at the, you know, at the Christmas time? I went for a retreat. Uh, retreat. Where? Deep alive. What happened to you? A change came upon my life. Things happened. And then you begin to give testimony. It says, okay, okay. No, that's okay. Young people. When we were young too, we went to SU camp and we went to those places. Okay, I'll call you when I need you. You're still preparing the document as of the old, so the new year. And then it finishes all the documents. And you already, you thought, you know, since they asked you about retreat and everything, you thought everything was over. And uh, you didn't uh, think anything would happen. So he called you now and he said, uh, come here, come near my table here, sign this thing. Say, What's that, sir? I say, sign the scene. We were signing it last year now, in the old year. And this new year, man must eat. Sign here. I'm sorry, sir. I can't do it again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. Something happened to me. I am born again. Born again. Born again. I am born again. You mean you will not sign this? Do you know what is waiting for you? You will lose your job if you don't sign this. No answer. Okay, sign it now. I'm sorry, sir. I am born again. I cannot sign that kind of thing anymore. Am I talking to somebody there today? You will not obey Satan or the agents of Satan. Price to pay. Even if they kick you out of that place, a greater job is coming for you in the new year. You will take your stand and you will bring that old price. You bring it for a new progress. Look at First Corinthians chapter six. I'm reading from verse nineteen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own. Look at this. For ye are bought. Tell me, tell me. 
was a price. What a great price. Yeah, but was a price. Because of the price that brought you into the kingdom. That's why you're willing to pay any price. You will keep your place in the kingdom in Jesus' name. No more compromise. No more cringing. I said no more cringing. No more cowardice. You know, they call you and then you're shaking. You know? Why are you shaking? You forget Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Pay the price. You are going to have promotion. You are going to have progress. You, you remember Daniel? Daniel, if anybody prays for these 30 days, except to the king, except to a man, except to replace God with a mortal man, that person will be cast into the lion's den. And then after Daniel had that, he said, what a new day for a price to be paid. My conviction must have a price. My commitment must have a price. And my consecration must have a price. He opened his windows as they did in the old covenant. And he knelt down and he prayed three times a day. He knew they were watching. He said, watch all you want. I'm going to pay the price. Somebody there, I'm going to pay the price. Somebody there, I'm going to pay the price. Hey, look at look at that again, verse twenty. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify God in your body, Pastor. Tell me, how do I glorify God in my body? Your hand, part of your body. You'll never write anything sign anything that will not glorify God. Your feet, part of your body, you'll never use your feet and walk anywhere, drive anywhere that will not bring glory to God. Your eyes, you'll never see anything. You'll never be interested in anything. The people of the world, they are, you know, excited about that thing, masquerades. And they are running after old men and old women and young adults, men and women. Masquerade has come, masquerade has come. And they are running after. Your feet will not follow them. Give me a good day, amen. Your eyes will not see them. No. All those dirty things they show on the screen of any gadget. Your eyes will not see them. You know, you're looking for something on the internet, and then something pops up, and it says, follow this. No, I'm following Christ. I'll not follow that. I said, I'm following Christ. Anybody following Christ there? I am following Christ. I am following Christ. I will not follow that thing. <laughs> Look up here. You know, some people... I don't know how they are following Christ. They were checking up something you know, on their system. Legitimate thing. And then something pops up. Bad thing. Dirty thing. Defiling thing. And then they know what it is because it's reaching underneath there. And then they go there and they are feeding their mind with those dirty things with their eyes. And then their wife is coming. As the wife is coming, then they close it up and, honey, what's that? I'm just trying to look at news here. That's a lie. In the new year, you will not tell a lie. In the new year, you will not follow after that defiling sin. There is a price to pay. If you're going to make new progress in the new year. In fact, it tells us, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. Ye are bought with a price. Be not 
the servants of men. Be not the servants of men. Don't serve them in any evil way. I didn't hear amen from you. Amen. Driver, come. Madame has gone out of the house. And I want you, you know that woman you normally bring when Madame is not at home? Quickly, quickly. Go and bring her before Madame comes back. Sir, I'm sorry. What are you sorry about? I cannot go and take another person's wife for you anymore when Madame is not at home. You will lose your job. You are going to be poor. You will not pay your house rent. This new decision you have taken will wreck you and ruin you. Thank you, sir. Okay, take the key. Five minutes, but there, I'm waiting. I will not go, sir. That's the price. You will not go. I said, you will not go. I will not go. As a Christian, if I were walking with any man, any woman, anywhere, no matter how high his position, he wants me to help him commit adultery or commit fornication. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I will not help him to serve Satan. If he wants to serve Satan, that's in his hand. I will not help anybody to serve Satan. Give me a good amen. amen. And so, what if you lose your job? A greater job is waiting for you. We will pay the price and we will make new progress in the new year in Jesus' name. Psalm 4, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 4, and we're looking at verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself, not for Satan, not for evil, not for pollution, not for corruption. He has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. He set apart everyone that is godly for himself. We're looking at Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. We've read in the Old Testament. He set apart him that is godly for himself. And now New Testament. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, look at this, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Point number three, benefiting from the old privileges as new peculiar people. Again, we're coming from the old to the new. And we're pointing out that all the good things the Lord has taught us in this old year, as we go to the new year, those good things abide. Those righteous standards abide. And those peculiarities abide. And we're not going to say it's a new year, therefore it's going to be a year of carelessness. It's going to be a year of sinfulness. No, we're peculiar people, peculiar in the old, peculiar in the new. Come to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. I'm reading here from verse 5. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now therefore... 
if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, Everybody, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go again. One, two, three, once again. All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's how to be a peculiar treasure, peculiar people. You see those Old Testament people, peculiar people. Let's come to First Peter, First Peter, chapter two. I'm reading from verse 9, First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Peculiar treasure, peculiar people in the old, peculiar people too, in the new. We're not supposed to be common. We're not supposed to be ordinary. Look at, you know, he says as a Christian, I can't see any peculiarity in his life. Is, an, is a Christian walking in any office, you cannot see the peculiarity of punctuality, the peculiarity of signing the exact time that she came to the office, is going to sign another time. Peculiarity. Other people are claiming, um, you know, um, over time, which they didn't do. He, you cannot see any peculiarity in his life. It's just like the same. It's a Christian in a family. And this one, the family got married that way. This one, the family got married that way. When he's going to get married, he marries in the same way. You cannot see any peculiarity. If you're a child of God, the Lord said in the old, you are a peculiar treasure unto me. You'll be different. You'll be distinct. What the other people wear, you wear the same, what's the peculiarity? How the other people go, you go the same path, what's the peculiarity? All your family members, this is what they do, and you are never different. What's the peculiarity? In the old, the people of God were peculiar. Come to the new, in the new, we're peculiar. And thank God I am peculiar. I said, I am peculiar. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But she is a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Tell me what follows. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light you will be peculiar come back to the old testament i'm reading from deuteronomy chapter 14 deuteronomy chapter 14 i read here from verse 2 i'm reading from deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2 for thou art an holy people unto the lord thy god thou art an holy people unto the lord thy god not only on sunday not only on saturday sabbath every day every time if we belong to the lord we're holy unto the lord our god and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. If they say you are odd, they're just saying what God has chosen you for. They say you're queer. 
you are just saying what the Lord has chosen you for. They say you are different. That's just what the Lord has chosen you for. They say you go to a church that will not hear the world. That all the world, they are talking and they are making their noise and you will not hear the world. You are just, they are just saying what the Lord has chosen you for. He said, you will be a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 18. And the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. He repeats it over and over and over. Don't you ever think, you know, they say that church is uh, doing this. Why don't we do it? Because we're peculiar. That religious organization has, you know, changed their doctrine. They have changed their lives. And so that they can open wide their doors in their church to bring in the worldly people. And there's a lot of the world in that church. Why don't we do the same? Because our calling is to be peculiar, is to be different. And to walk by the word of God, not by the ways of men. Look at that verse 18 again. The Lord has about to this day to be his peculiar people, as he has promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. Verse 19 and to make thee high above all nations. I see you high, I see you up. Once you remain peculiar, your blessings will come from God. Once you remain totally sold out to God, surrendered to God, your blessings will come to the Lord. Are you trying to use worldly wisdom to be as much of the world as the people out there? It says, and to make thee high above all nations which he has made in praise, and in name and in honor that thou mayest be, tell me, that thou mayest be and holy people not making allowances for sin, allowances for compromise, allowances for fear of man, that thou mightest be and holy people unto the Lord thy God as he as spoken, I'll be like that. We're coming to Job chapter 36. Job chapter 36, and I'm reading from verse 11. Job chapter 36, verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure pain will vanish away your bodies will vanish away we're coming into a new year and we're going to be new peculiar people our lives are going to shine our lives are going to be in the progress high up in Jesus' name. And it's based on obeying the Lord. Look at Old Testament. If they obey and serve him, I will obey and serve. I said I will obey and serve. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. It will prosper you. Everything you do in this coming new year, it will prosper. And they will spend their years, this coming year, pleasure of God. The goodness of God.
all the rest of the years of your life as you obey him you are going to have progress upon progress upon progress upon progress in jesus name isaiah chapter one isaiah chapter one i'm reading here from verse 19 isaiah chapter one verse 19 if you be willing and obedient are you there if you be willing and obedient i said are you there you know in the past we used to run to the bible study that time i remember we had only one bible study in lagos state and people from a pair they will come monday night from microdu they will come monday night from Badagri, they will come Monday night. And if the hold up delayed them as they got down from the bus and they looked at their time and they said crosses were started, uh, they start running. How many of you remember those days? Those days are coming back again. You will enjoy hearing the word of God. You'll be willing hearing the word of God. It will not be for bread, bread and butter. You will seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And you give God chance to add all other things unto you in Jesus' name. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And one of the people that will eat the good of this land. I said, I am. I said, I am. I said, I am one of the people that will eat the good of the land in Jesus' name. Famine will never get to your house. Poverty will never get to your house. Willing, willing, willing and obedient, you are going to eat the good of the land. First Peter, first Peter, first Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, tell me, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. What are we expecting now for the new year? Come to Second Peter, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. According as His divine power, He has given unto you. He has given unto unto us how many things all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue virtue this year glory this year divine goodness this year whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lost. Every bad thing in your community, you will escape. Every hazard, every danger in your community, you will escape. The promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 8, First Kings chapter 8, verse 56. First Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Blessed be the God, the Lord, that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised there has not failed one word there will not fail one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of moses his servant 
Once again, I welcome you to this final Sunday service of this old year. And I now usher you to the new year with the promises of God. Before you, the promises of God. Behind you, the promises of God. On your left, the promises of God. On your right, the promises of God. As you go, the power of God will go with you. The presence of God will go with you. And the sufficiency of God will go with you. No evil will come your way. The devil will fall before you in Jesus' name. As your days are, so will your strength be. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 25. Thy shoes will be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy hell, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is your refuge. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. They shall thrust out the enemy from before you, and shall say, destroy them. Israel, the people of God here today, shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also your heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou. Happy art thou. Happy art thou. Who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy hell? Who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Thou shalt tread upon their high places. This coming year, you'll go higher. You'll be the head. You'll not be the tail. You'll be in front. You'll not be at the back. Progress. Peace. Prosperity. Healing. Health. Deliverance. Dominion. Miracles upon miracles all over your life. Rise up and receive. Rise up and receive. Rise up and receive. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, the old promises are still for the new pilgrims. The old price must still be paid for a new progress. And the old privileges still abide for the new peculiar people. Let the Lord do a new thing in your life today as you move from the old and you move on to the new.